Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening, everyone. I want to welcome you to the January session of 2019 of my Psychic Hour. This is just so amazing to be starting the new year with all of you tonight and to be starting it on a blood wolf moon that's also an eclipse. How amazing is that? Um, so the reason I rescheduled from last week is because I had some personal things come up. And then I realized how beautifully my guides were working because the best time for tonight's webinar on the psychic hour is right now on this eclipse wolf blood moon. It's absolutely an amazing time for us to be meeting. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that in just a couple of minutes because I'm, I'm so excited. This is just a, a wonderful time to start the year with all of you, my friends who have been many of you with me for so long, joining me in these psychic hours. Um, I'm looking at the roster of names here and I see a lot of new people on here this evening too. And if you're new to the Psychic Hour, I want to welcome you from the bottom of my heart. It is such a pleasure to have you join me here. Folks, as I get started this evening, I do have a couple of announcements to make. So bear with me as I jump into those first. Uh, first of all, please make a note. Our next Psychic Hour is going to be on February 10th. Um, so if you haven't signed up for that yet, you might want to do that. Uh, the psychic hours do fill up. I have a large group on here. I work with GoToWebinar, but I do have a ceiling of 100 people. And so once we get past that, folks, you won't be able to get in. So it's always a good idea to register early and make sure you're one of the people who can get in and get here a little bit early, as I see most of you are doing, which is absolutely wonderful. So February 10th is when we meet again. The second thing I want to remind you of, uh, a lot of you have been, if you're on my email list, you've been getting my uh, emails about my psychic development class, the Anastasi System of Psychic Development, that just began last Wednesday evening right here online. And I want to make note of that and make sure you are aware that that class has just started it is not too late. I have two openings left in the class. It's not too late if that's something you've been sitting on the fence about. You know you're psychic. You want to develop your abilities. And you're wondering, is it time? Is it time? Folks, it's time <laughs> because I only offer this program where I'm actually teaching you live online like you're seeing me here um, once a year. It runs from... January through May. So folks, if you are interested, grab one of those few remaining spots before they're gone. Uh, it's not too late to make up that one session that you missed. So enough about that. It's, it's going. It's a great class. I'd love to have you in it if you want to be there, but it's up to you to take that step with me. Okay, the other thing I wanted to make mention of um, is Folks who are in my VIP membership program, um, our first Q&A, our question answer session um, with the membership program is going to be this coming Thursday night. Uh, so that's Thursday the 24th. We meet at 7 p.m. And I do hope, I, I see a lot of names here that are in the VIP uh, section of my website, the VIP program, which is why I'm mentioning this. But I, it also gives me an opportunity to let the rest of you who are not yet VIP members know about the VIP section on my website, the VIP program. It has over 300 MP3 audio downloadable programs. These are programs with four to six classes and sometimes more, sometimes 10 or 12 classes each in every area of metaphysics. Most of them I'm teaching, a few of them uh, my friend and colleague John Mayers is teaching, some of them we co-teach. Folks, it's, it's a, a complete PhD program 
in every area of metaphysics if you join that VIP program and, uh, and, and work your way through those classes. And one of the bonuses that VIP members get is that I meet with you folks monthly to address your questions on the things that you've been studying and learning about. Um, that's just, there's no extra charge for that. It's just included with the membership. And uh, so those of you who are VIP members, I do hope I'm going to get to see you this Thursday evening and we'll be chatting just like we're chatting here. Um, Lisa will be sending you the link and, uh, and we'll, we'll have this wonderful question and answer period on the things that you're studying. So, Armed with all that information, uh, one other thing I do want to make mention of, uh, because a couple of people have questioned me about it, I did cancel my uh, my cruise that was scheduled for April, and I've had a few people say, Sandy, why did you schedule you know uh, something else there, or why did you even cancel that? And no, I'm not scheduling something else for that that week, and the reason I canceled it is because my guide said cancel it. I was getting too many signals and signs. And then after I canceled it, lo and behold, I found out from a friend last week that Abraham Hicks is having their Alaskan cruise that same week. So guess what? I never looked at their website, didn't realize it. Um, but folks, if you were going to cruise with me, you now have the opportunity to go and cruise with Abraham. I would not ever go into competition uh, with Esther Hicks and, and her channeling of Abraham because I truly I truly believe what she's doing is wonderful work. So uh, I honestly think that's the reason why my guides kept saying, cancel that, cancel that, Sandy. But what you folks can look to me for is later in the year, I will be doing possibly another cruise, but definitely a land-based event. So keep keep your ears peeled and your and your eyes on my website and keep reading my newsletter because once we get it figured out, because you're on the psychic hour, you will definitely be among the first to know. So are you with me so far? Let's talk about the wolf blood moon. Uh, first, I'm going to break it down scientifically, very basically. Um, the reason we call the blood moon a blood moon is because where it's located and its light is coming through the Earth's atmosphere, the way it connects with the sun makes it look a bloody red. It's very pale. It's dim. It's dark. It's not a bright moon like we normally have on a full moon. And so it has the name blood root moon because it's, it's that you know bloody or rusty color moon. The reason it's called a supermoon is because it is, again, at the angle on the horizon where the moon itself is so very, very large uh, perceptively when we're looking at it. And the reason it's called a wolf moon is because the Indians, um, specifically the Pawnee, but other Indian tribes as well, call the winter months, the January, February months, the months of the wolf, and particularly the first full moon of the year, of the, of the uh, January year, is always called the wolf moon. So you have all that kind of technical information there that's a little bit mixed into folklore, too. That's kind of interesting. Um, but according to the folklore, and this is where it gets kind of fun, um, the wolf spirit, very important in Indian lore, is a spirit in the sky who watches over the evening star. Now, the evening star, of course, is the moon. So the wolf moon is the, literally the wolf overlooking, the wolf star or the wolf spirit overlooking and guarding the moon as it goes through its eclipse, which is really kind of very special. And the moon is considered not only the guardian, of or, or the wolf moon is considered not only the guardian of the moon, but the wolf spirit also is a servant of the sun. So think about how important that is, because in an eclipse, the sun and the moon are opposing one another. So you've got the wolf spirit who is serving the sun and guarding the moon and overseeing 
this super moon, blood moon, wolf moon eclipse that we are having this evening. And that eclipse is going to be occurring. It'll start just before midnight tonight, and it's going to be done by about 1245 tomorrow morning. So we've got this uh, maybe about a total of a two-hour period and that small period in the middle where it's actually total. And that's kind of important, too, because there are very few total lunar eclipses during the year. And this particular one can be seen all over the Americas, parts of Africa and Western Europe as a total eclipse. The rest of the world, if they see it, will see it as a partial eclipse. And what else is interesting about this particular eclipse is it occurs at not quite one degree or zero, somewhere between zero and one degree. It's not quite one degree of Leo. So it's a zero degree eclipse, essentially. And it is the second of five eclipses that are going to occur, or five, not eclipses, five full moons this year that will occur at zero degrees, not all of Leo, different signs, but we have five eclipses during the year that are going to occur at zero degrees. I'm saying it again, eclipses, not eclipses, full moons, five full moons that will occur at a zero degree. And this particular one, which is the second in the series, is also an eclipse. How cool is that? And of course, those of you who follow my work, I have to say this because this is important, you know that I always begin keeping an eclipse diary two weeks before the first eclipse in an eclipse series. Folks, that puts the timing for your diary or journal on Christmas Day, December 25th. Start your journal then, so you're going to have to backtrack to recreate it. And keep your journal all through January and through the end of the first week of February. That's two weeks after the second eclipse. Okay. Now, what's really going on here is that you're getting a movie trailer. In this case, because the eclipses happen in January, you're getting a movie trailer into the next year of your life. How great is that? Not only get, do you get to have my predictions here on the Psychic Hour, but you also get to have your own predictions that you get from your journal. <laughs> So, and please be aware of this. I always have people, when I say that, I always have people say, oh my God, somebody in my family just died and somebody got divorced and uh, there's all these terrible things going on. Does that mean we're going to have these terrible things happening all year? Folks, I've got to tell you, it's not just about the events. It's about the feelings you have as a result of those events or going into those events. So record your feelings about things because it is with your feelings and your emotional reactions to things that you create your world. So this movie trailer that you're getting for this six week period is very important. It doesn't just show you things that you'll be encountering in life this year, 2019. It gives you the handle on them through understanding how you should be emotionally reacting to things and people in order to make this year the best year of your life. Okay. Enough on the, uh, the eclipse and the full moon and the blood moon. And uh, if that comes up in questions, that's great. But I do want to jump into our hour. Um, folks, here's how it goes. Um, Lisa's going to call on you. She has the floor in these sessions. If you have a question and you're afraid to speak, you're welcome to type that question into the chat room. When... Lisa sees a good question in there or a series of questions about the same topic. She will read those questions out so that you don't have to actually speak if you don't want to. If you want to speak, you're not shy, please raise your hand. You'll see there's a hand next to your name. Raise that hand by clicking on it, and Lisa will know that you have a question for me this evening. Now, when you get called on, here's what I would like from you. First, Please, your first name. Second, and, and by the way, this does get posted, as you know, on YouTube. So, you know, don't talk if you don't want to hear your voice. Okay. By talking, you're giving me permission. So the first thing I want to know is just your first name. 
I would like to know the state that you're calling from or the country. Um, we do get callers from around the world, and that's always fun to know. And I want to know what you're most grateful for right now at this moment in your life. Please share that with us. And your sun sign. Uh, by that, I mean what's the day, month in, that you were born. Not the year, but the day and the month. So if I know your sun sign, I can utilize this chart up here, which is called a horary chart in astrology, to give you some good insight as to what's going on in your life right now. And the beauty of that is that it's going to give some information for everybody else who's on the call this evening. My guides have a way of managing to answer a question for everybody who's here, whether you raise your hand or not. <laughs> they get to you. Okay, Lisa, who is our first victim for this evening, please? Yeah, the first victim on this full moon is going to be Michelle. If I can unmute. <laughs> There you go. Hello. Hello. Hello, Sandy. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, to respond to what your requests for information are, my name's Michelle. I'm living in Nebraska. And I'm most grateful for my daughters and my grand angels, which is what I call their children because they are angels. They all are. And my date of birth is April 12th. Okay. 65. I don't care if I tell you here. <laughs> yep. As a, as a little Aries, Michelle, um, this house up here where my cursor is, uh, that's the eighth house in the chart, is what we're talking about this evening when we talk about you. And what's so cool is the Aries here, Mars, which is your ruling planet, is in your sign right now. And this is a fast moving planet. And so it's only going to be in your sun sign for a little over a month. And boy, is it going to be an active, active time. And there's also Uranus here. That's this planet also near Mars. And I've got to talk to you about this for a moment. And all of the other Aries who are on the call, please listen carefully. And if you are a Cancer, a Capricorn or a Libra, it's not a bad idea to pay attention either because you are all cardinal signs. So this information is going to pertain to all of you, but most especially for Aries. Whenever we put Mars and Uranus together, and Mars is the faster moving planet here, so it's going to be closing that gap, it becomes explosive. So around you right now, Michelle, and all of you are the cardinal people, it's an explosive force of energy. Now, from a good point of view, that's like, hey, wow, I've got all this energy. <laughs> I can do a whole lot of things. I can make a whole lot of ha things happen right now. And that would be very good if you focus that energy into something that's productive. Very, very important, in fact, to do that. Because you see, if you're not focused, Michelle, or if you put yourself in a position where you feel blocked, notice how I said that other people don't block you. You put yourself in the position to be blocked. So notice how I phrase that. If you put yourself in a position where you'll be blocked, you are going to explode later this month. <laughs> okay? Okay. It's, 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 right. You can count it by the day. Okay? You're, you're needing to physically accomplish things. You're needing to get out there and take action. Your heart says, I want to do this with my partner. Your heart says, I want support in what I'm doing. Your heart says, I want to bring my family and my work and my career and your career and my family and your family and all of our friends together and work on all this together. And so there's this tremendous feeling, especially with this eclipse in, in Leo and the last eclipse that was in Aquarius, that's the humanitarian sign, there's, wow, I want to work together on all this stuff, and there's so much I want to do. The energy is coming out here in the productive house of your abilities and your creativity and how you can make money and maybe create your own business. And guess what? The, you're going you're gonna to reach opposition. You're going to find opposition. It's going to happen. And when you do, step two the side and go around the obstacle okay do me that favor 
don't keep hitting your head against the brick wall <laughs> okay or or be a diplomat you know don't be like like our people in congress don't be foolish say okay let's talk about this <laughs> okay <laughs> and yeah if you so like i said either step to the side go around the obstacle choose a different project or hash it out and expect that in in reaching an agreement you're going to make some sacrifices and if you can do those things not only will you not have the explosion that this aspect could potentially give but you will have this amazing productive phenomenal exciting month where everybody does get to work together okay did you see okay. that's what i was just saying because that was real important okay and remember yes. that's going to affect the aries and the capricorns and the cancers and also the libras okay all those cancer people all those capricorn people those libra people and those aries people and Folks, that means all of us who are on this call this evening, because I guarantee that everybody here has some planets in one of those signs. It just has, it happens to work that way. And it's probably one of the reasons you came to this call this evening. So Michelle, what's your specific question? Thank you. <laughs> well, due to circumstances happening in my home, that involves some sort of spiritual being beings. I am working on a spiritual awakening and I was curious if you could provide any insight either to what's going on into my home or what's go how I'm progressing forward with the spiritual awakening journey that I feel that I'm on. Okay, well, the first thing I want to say, and this is kind of cool. Thank you so much for bringing it up because I love when one of my people who are online with me here in the psychic hour brings this chart to life like you just did because this aries sign and this mars uranus energy that's here in the eighth house the eighth house is the house of spirits <laughs> i love it it's the house of talking <laughs> to dead people <laughs> okay. amen to that yep so you know this is this question was really appropriate okay um and i've got to tell you a few things about this um, first of all, when there's uh, spirit activity, and you'll find this in many, many of my classes, both in my membership program area, on my website, as well as in my psychic development classes, we go into this, books I've written, we go into this, specifically psychic development level four, five, and six, if you want to just pick those books up on Amazon. Um, here's the thing. You have family involvement in this, okay? Your, your kids parents family is involved in that activity and it's very probable that you've got both your own spiritual journey and awakening produces all this extra energy but you've also got what i would call poltergeist activity and if you study poltergeist poltergeist means noisy ghost poltergeists are very 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 rarely real um, they usually are phenomenon of things moving or sounds happening in a household where someone in the household is a what we call kinetic medium a person who's able with their subconscious mind usually these people aren't even aware they can do it to move things to make noises and so forth and when they're when they get upset or when they're super excited there's physical activity in the home so what this chart is saying is that you've got both going on because of your own spiritual awakening, you've got, and, and that is not your imagination, it is happening. And because of your own spiritual awakening, you are more sensitive to picking up on all of these things. And you also have somebody in your house that you're living with other than yourself. You may very well be also kinetic medium, but someone other than you who is living in your house is going through some serious emotional upheavals and that is the person who is the kinetic medium in their unconscious mind and is causing these disturbances um i'm not going to go into the specifics of it but uh i've had very i've had some real interesting experiences with this myself um one that i wanted to make mention of uh when i was a much younger woman 
I had a girlfriend who um, was a divorcee and she swore that she had a spirit living in her home who was protecting her because she was single and she never realized that she herself was the kinetic medium but the the piano would play in the middle of the night she was the only one in the family who could play the piano but she would be in bed and the piano would be playing she'd have a fight with her children in the kitchen and the water pipes overhead. I was there when this happened. They burst and the water poured through the ceiling. Uh, another time, another fight with a different kid. Plate flew across the wall from one wall where it was hanging and smashed into the opposite wall. The woman was a kinetic medium. And then one day she got a boyfriend. And all, the, all of the poltergeist activity in the house stopped. Totally dead stopped. And I said, okay. So... I've been telling you, you were the kinetic medium all along. When I'm around you and you get mad, I can feel the hair stand up on my arms. And I said to her, so are you going to admit it finally? And she said, no. She said, he chased the, the, he chased the ghost away. My boyfriend, he chased it away. <laughs> she never would have <laughs> Okay. So, you know, probably be it for me to argue the point. Okay. But what I see here in this chart and what my guides are telling me, is that you are a kinetic medium, so this action could happen from you. You also have somebody else living in the house who's going through a real emotional strain right now who's a kinetic medium, so you've got double trouble there. And both you and that other person are feeling blocked. So that... Could I ask you? <laughs> I, I apologize for interrupting, Sandy, but it's only me and two dogs. <laughs> One troublemaking dog, which is a pup, and a cane corso, which is a lazy, I'm happy with, everything going on so it's truly just me in the home but you know my dogs are now that what you can't be a spirit animal spirit no it's not that what you're doing is you're limiting yourself who's your best friend who's your closest who's your closest family member that you talk to almost every day that you have my youngest daughter right she used to live here right who is the kinetic medium so she may not be physically in the house but she's in the house <laughs> she's here every day right Okay. Okay. Thank you. That yeah. clarifies a lot. <laughs> okay. But remember, don't discount the fact that yes, you are becoming more sensitive all the time. And as a result, you're able to see and feel and hear these things far better than you ever could before. And let's ask one quick question here. Is there a real spirit involved with any of this? Okay. I'm asking my guides that. And you know, my guides are saying no. And I'm sorry about that because I know you had high hopes that that was somebody who passed that you really loved very dearly. And, um, you know, I think you're going to have to develop your connection to that person the hard way. Learn mediumship. <laughs> yes, I want to. I'm, yeah. I will. I'm going to continue. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. That was a really good question. I appreciate it. I love questions that, uh, well, first of all, that, I can, I can use the chart to show you the dynamics of it. And that way, so many people who are listening can start to understand how the energy works. Um, but I also love when a question is pertinent to so many people on the call. And I know that question was. I bet you as, as more calls come in, as more people ask questions, we're going to see how, how much that's appreciated by everybody who's here. So thank you. Thanks, Michelle. That was great. God bless you. Thank you very much. And Lisa, who is next? All righty, our next person is going to be Rachel. Rachel, you're unmuted. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Rachel. How are you? I'm good. Good. Um, yes, my name is Rachel. I'm in South Carolina, and um, I'm a Cancer. And I'm most grateful for my job right now. And let me ask you, before we go on, um, are you working two jobs or are you working in two departments or are you thinking of doing a separate, a new profession in addition to this job? Um, I am working full time and I'm also going to school. Okay, there it is. And yeah. the reason I asked you and all of you folks who are cancer, pay attention. Here's the house of cancer where I've got my cursor, but there's the house of career. And it has a sign Gemini on it, which is duality. That's two. That says you're doing two things. Okay. Yeah. And incidentally, Gemini also talks about foundation education. So whatever you're going to school for is the foundation for what probably will one day be a new career, isn't it? 
Yes. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> and once again, I love I love when the, when the, when you can see how accurately a horror chart works out for everybody who's on the call. That's one of the things that's so much fun about doing this. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, it is. It's just cool. Um, and what what do you you said you're most grateful for your job? What is mm -hmm. your uh, specific question? Um, my question is that I'm not sure if I can word it correctly. Um, so I, I was, I went through a sort of spiritual awakening for about five years and I came out the other end of it, um, with a, like an understanding of how things worked for me. Like I, how, when I look at something happening in the world, I go, I know how that's working, what's making that happen. But, um, I'm feeling sort of so funny that you were talking about being blocked. I'm I'm feeling like I'm not sure what the next step would be. I'm always in this sense of lack or longing or wanting to connect with my higher self or my guides. And when I try to do so, I just, it's like a brick wall. Like there's nothing there. And I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong, what I need to do more. I mean, I've tried meditation and all kinds of things. And I'm, I don't know, I'm just stumped. Well, with meditation, if you've been following my posts on, on YouTube, meditation covers a lot of ground. People people dump a whole lot of different techniques into meditation that aren't necessarily true meditation. When, when you say meditation, have you been working with that yoga style meditation where your mind is still and empty and your focus is only on the breath? Um, I've done a few different things. I've listened to like Hemisync, Hemisync is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Um to try to to try to do that, um, I have tried the um, letting your thoughts happen and not paying attention to them, and just trying to kind of be still and calm and focus on the breath. I've tried that too. Um, I've tried journaling. Yeah, I can't think of anything else, but um, yep. it's just not. Well, you know, journaling is nice and it's great and it's helpful. It is not meditation. Okay. Right. Um, the mindfulness kind of meditation where we're, you're focusing completely outside of yourself on every single thing around you. Um, unfortunately, your mind is far too active for that, so it's not working well for you. Um, you have maybe paid a little bit of lip service to the yoga style, just, just still the mind and focus on the breath, but it didn't happen fast enough for you, so you let it go. Okay, um, That's the only kind of meditation that is going to lead to spiritual awareness. The others will not. Um, Hemi-sync, hem synchronizing the two halves of the brain. Um, there are many different ways of doing the, using Hemi-sync. Monroe Institute is one of them, Center Point's another. And those are great tools. They are aids. Guided visualizations are, again, great aids. What they do is they teach your brain how to feel the brain wave. But if you trust something that somebody else is doing to get you there, you're not ever going to do it yourself. You see? So, yeah. you know, if, you're, if your focus is enlightenment, that's your focus. Um, there are only two things that I know that are going to get you there. One is the sitting yoga style meditation with the focus on the breath. And, yes, it can be frustrating because your active mind wants to resist it. The other, believe it or not, is for free on my website. It is the Kabbalah path working. Okay. And if you start at path 32 and it goes backwards up the tree and you can, you can either take the program, which is a paid, it's a cost program. It's out there where I'm leading you through it and guiding you, etc., etc. Or you can do it for free. The, the, the recordings are guided meditations that are free and you can download the book on amazon.com. It's not expensive. You can walk yourself through it. And guess what? People achieve phenomenal results and experiences from those classes. And they are guided meditations, but they hit, um, they hit places in your psyche that are connected to the universal archetype. It's kind of like uh, acupuncture in your brain. <laughs> okay? You get stimulated in a certain way that encourages growth. Now, would that replace yoga-style sitting meditation? No. It doesn't replace it. It's an alternative method of getting there. It will help. But if you really want to get there on your own completely, it's the yoga style meditation with focus on the breath. 
Now, here's what's going on for you and why you're being blocked. Okay, and again, folks, if you are a cardinal sign, Cancer, Aries, Libra, Capricorn, please pay attention. There is someone around you who is blocking your spiritual growth, period. And yes, our friend who just called Michelle said, no, I live with two dogs. Does that mean my dog is blocking me? No, it's probably your daughter. <laughs> or maybe somebody you're working with that you see every day. Or maybe it's your own mind that won't let go of a past relationship. Okay. In your case, guess what? It is your relationship partner. And I'm assuming, and now this is a big jump, I'm assuming that when you made your huge spiritual jump, you weren't with that partner. You were either on your own or you had stepped away from that relationship. And then you stepped back into it and you really, really wanted to connect with that person. And the thing is, is that your spiritual awakening was completed using the energy of self. And now you're no longer the energy of self, you're that combined energy of you and the partner. So it's as if you have to find a new way to do it. Only the partner is not on the same page as you. And so that becomes a block unless, I'm not saying you've got to divorce your, your life mate. I'm not saying you have to ditch him. What I am saying, though, is that your spiritual journey is your spiritual journey and cannot include him. Did that just make sense to you? Holy moly, yes. And I'm, I'm just so very sorry to, to lay that one on you. But, you know, they say there are only three things in life that, you know, are inevitable, earth, death, and taxes. Well, there's one more, and that is that you have to be born alone, you have to die alone, and your spiritual journey is alone. If you're very lucky, you get to walk the path with another person for a few blocks here and there. But ultimately, no one in this entire universe knows your spiritual journey except you. You got it? And oh, yeah. be grateful for those few steps you can take with that partner that you really love. But there's going to come a time when he's got to go on his journey and you've got to go on yours. And then you can come back together and you can go apart. You come back together and you can go apart. And that's all fine. But don't blend yourself so totally with that other person that you cannot achieve your own spiritual growth. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. That, incidentally, is one of the things that if you do the path working, you will learn. It's part of the experience. Okay? Okay. Okay. Any awesome. other questions or did, did that answer for you? That's, that's, it's crazy how good on you are. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> Great. Thank you. You're very welcome. And thank you so much for asking that question. Uh, because like I said, that wasn't just yours. Every single person who's on this call tonight, who is either a Cancer and Aries, a Capricorn or a Libra, or has important planets like the South Node or the Sun or the Moon or the Ascendant, in one of those cardinal signs is having that same experience. And it does create a quandary because you want so badly to be on those spiritual heights that you know are just there, but you don't want to leave your partner behind. And what you don't realize is that very likely when you get where you want to go, you're going to find your partner there waiting for you. They just have to take their own route. Remember that. <laughs> okay. And who's next on our list, Lisa? All right, our next person is going to be Sandra. It says you're self-muted. Can you unmute, Sandra? There you go. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, great. Hi, Sandy. Hi. I'm Sandra. Good to hear from you. And? I am smiling from ear to ear. First of all, um, I'm also an Aries. So uh, we're popular tonight, uh -huh. and I am living in uh, Huntsville, Alabama, and I'm smiling because every single question or thought that I had to ask you, you've already addressed. <laughs> um, it's, it's hilarious. I've been through an awakening, and the last two years have been super amplified, and my father that was estranged for 16 years showed up last week on the day that I had to give my dog up. 
um, surrounded by coming out of a horrible uh, romantic situation. So I'm literally today just breathing fresh air. And I guess my question is, do my spirits or my guides have any um, direction for me? Because I'm kind of just breathing fresh. I know something is over. I know I'm I'm getting through something. I'm healing, but I'm kind of just like not sure where to go from here. Well, I want to tell you that first of all, I have both sorrow and joy for you. Okay. Yes. Yes. As, as, you're, as you're talking, and this is your your mom coming through. By the way, she passed. Is it your mom? No. There's um, a, I just found out from my dad that my uh, paternal grandmother has passed as well as my aunt, which I was close to as a child. My maternal grandmother has passed. My mother is um, estranged for 20 years. Um, there was a brief attempt, but it's just not a relationship that was meant to be. So and then it's not your physical mother. I'm getting a mother here. Okay, that's why it's, and the mother it's one of my grandmas, yeah. It's yeah, it's not your aunt. It's I think it's your paternal grandmother. And that's where the joy and the sorrow together is coming from. Okay? Yes. Um and what she wants you to know is that what you there, there are tears here. I'm feeling the tears from her that you had to go through this. And that's what she puts it, that you had to go through this. I know um, it. Yes. Yeah. And she said this, and this again, it shows up in the chart. I'll explain that in a moment. But she says that this whole situation with the, she says, series, not one, series of bad relationships that had to do with your looking for something that did not exist. Okay. Yeah. And she says that this entire pattern that has ruled your life since birth isn't your own pattern she said it's a family pattern and we've all done it wow yeah and That's so the, the the reason for the joy and the sorrow at the same time is she knows how much it hurts and this is far more than just a relationship that has ended what has ended for you is a whole way of life um and I'm not just talking about having to give up your dog. It's when I say it's a whole way of life, it's the expectation of the way relationships are supposed to be. And mm -hmm. you they're not. Do you see? And yeah. what what's happened here is that you will never lie to yourself again, nor will you ever allow yourself to be lied to again. There are no more rose colored glasses on in on your face when it comes to relationships. And that's not just your relationship with your ex. That's your relationship, I'm hearing, daughter. It's your relationship with your best friend. It's your relationship with your colleagues. It would be your relationship with me. There are no more rose-colored glasses. You will only see what is. And when you want to put those glasses back on, there's something inside of you that smacks yourself and says, don't you do that. Yep. <laughs> and, and so the sorrow... You see, the sorrow is for the death of innocence. But the joy is for the birth of having stepped into the world in a real way. Is that making sense to you? It makes 100% sense. It took so long. Yeah, it really did. No more, mis no more misconceptions. No more, no more mistaking anything. Reality and finding out that reality is far better than all the imaginary things ever could have been. It's, you know, when my dad just showed up out of the blue and he was really kind of an innocent bystander, it, you know, it validated that part of me that disappeared because I never had a family. Yeah, yeah. Well, and this is interesting. You should talk about this too because there is for you and many of the other people on this call this evening, um, I think if we talked to everybody here, we'd find that for everyone here, family is high on their list as being one of the most important things in their lives. And yet family is one of those things that's really hard to pull together and get on the same page and really feel good about. So everyone here, including you, is in the process of becoming part of what I call the world family. Your next door neighbor, 
the person you work with, your best friend may end up being a better mother, father, sister to you than your own birth family ever was. Do you see? And yeah. everyone on this call who is a cardinal sign, those Aries, Cancers, Capricorns, and Libras, there's so many of you here this evening, and you're all having some kind of similar experience in your life where you're graduating from a belief system about the family or about a relationship that no longer works in your life. And people are coming into your life to populate it that you never ever expected to be there. So open and embrace that because that's what that's what your new growth is going to be all about. Um, and one other thing I want to say to you before I let you go, please, please, please trust your intuition. Because through all this grief and difficulty that you've gone through, right up to leaving your dog with your ex, okay, all of these things have been, you've been moving through these with your intuition turned up to high. And because of that, you've been able to do it in a way that's healthy for you. And you're going to achieve this phenomenal healing. So keep following your intuition and keep trusting your intuition. Okay? Thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, did you have a specific question there that you also wanted to ask? Um, you got it. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. Thank you, Sandy. And Lisa, who is our next caller? Okay, our next caller is going to be Ellen. And Ellen, can you unmute yourself? Hello, Ellen. There you go. Hi. Hi there. Are you there? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, I couldn't hear you. I had my earphones in and I forgot to take out. <laughs> um, Anyway, my name's Ellen, and I am most grateful for my daughter who is visiting from out of state. And um, I live in Florida, and my birthday is August 26th. Okay, you know, you're an interesting gal because you, and you know this about yourself already, you are a Virgo, but you're so close to the sign Leo that the eclipse we're having tonight is dead on your sun. It's I'm not talking about your son of your birth. I'm talking about your son's sign. Okay. Uh -huh. and, and it's on your son from the 12th house in this horary chart. So you're doing a whole lot of soul searching, you know, in the midst yes. of this wonderful time with your daughter. You, you know, she's having a great time and you're doing some soul searching. <laughs> <laughs> but when yes. we have an eclipse that hits one of our, any planet in our chart, but, but our son, the way it is hitting yours, this is a time in your life where you know that the choices that you're about to be making in your life are going to have earth shattering forever changes and you're not going to be able to go back. And I think that, you know, the soul searching is because you know that and, you know, you've already cast your stone. You already know how you want to move forward but you want to be comfortable inside with that. Is, is that mm -hmm. make sense to you? Absolutely. And you're absolutely right. Life 2019 for you is going to be a transitionary year into basically a whole new life. Mm. Enjoy it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now, what's your, what's your particular question? Uh, my question is just what you're addressing. It's that I have a business that I am trying to get off the ground, and it's doing okay, but I would like it to be income-producing income so that it can sustain my lifestyle, and I'm not sure what to do to be able to do that. Um, well, here's one of the issues for you. You need a partner in order to make this work as effectively as you want it to, you cannot do it by yourself. You need to have a partner that you can work with. That's number one. Okay. Number two, you don't really work well with partners. <laughs> 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 so there's, there's, there's a little bit of a rub there. Okay. Um, but here's, here's what maybe you can do. And I don't know, uh, they're not telling me what, what the business is. But if you can 
Um, e either the person has to be somebody who works for you as an employee so that we have a pecking order established, or they have to be someone who comes in with their own experience and their own business, and now you have the two businesses that work together. You see? Mm -hmm. But yeah. you have to be assigned either because it's you, either because it's another business or because the person's working for you. You literally need to be assigned the position of dominance and, and ownership because it's not your nature to step into that dominant role, which is interesting mm -hmm. because, you know, you're a great manager of both people and money and stuff. So it's not about capability. It's about you just don't really feel comfortable pushing people around. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Okay. Um, but you definitely, you know, once you get that whole issue worked out as to how to achieve the, uh, you know, the relative way that we're going to interconnect that uh, leaves everybody their own authority. Um, once you do that, you'll be fine. But you definitely need to have uh, that colleague or that person that you work with to be able to build it to what you want it to be. Okay, and I was thinking about going into business with um, a friend of mine. We were just talking about it very recently. Uh, what do you think about that? Is that a woman? Uh-huh. Okay. I think that the idea of going into business with somebody is excellent. I do not think she's the right one. Mm. And uh, let me tell you, I, I pulled a card. My guides talk to me a lot of times through cards. Uh -huh. This card is the Nine of Pentacles, and it's inverted. And that's the woman. And what that talks about is that she's limited financially or perhaps there's somebody in her life that limits her. I would say both. Okay. And, you know, I think when you talked about the partnership with her, I think that was the thing that needs to go into your journal. And how you felt about having a partner needs to go into your journal. But she may not be the right partner. If you do go into partnership with her, you need to make it not the same business and you need to make sure that whatever areas are under her control, you have the potential if she fails in them or lets you down to back out and hire somebody else to do it. Mm, okay. What I'm saying is that if, if you use her as a partner, CYA. Okay. Okay. And then you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and that by the way is just good business sense anyway okay what was that and that's just good business sense anyway right yeah right okay. all right and i was also thinking about um expanding my business a little bit to do birthday parties either for kids or else um doing what i create with a group of women what do you think about those ideas well i think the parties for the kids are the best Thing yet I think they'll do very very well um, the what you the thing with the group of women the what you're creating there are too many hands in that pot well once oh, okay. you, yeah once you get it boiled down and you get rid of all the people who want to be the takeover artist but don't really have the talent uh -huh. left you can do a lot with <laughs> okay, okay. The, one, the one with the kids looks like immediately you could you could turn that into something successful and and also very joyous yeah do you know how i would start that like what would i do i, I already googled um kids themed birthday parties but i don't really know i don't really know what to do next how to how to do it start to do it just you know, don't quit quit talking about it and do it <laughs> <laughs> Get one person and do it and that's going to start and now and now you'll have literature and now you have testimonials and now you will have pictures that you can use in advertisements and flyers just do it okay go to groups and organizations in your area and offer it for you know i'm running a special okay you don't have to say this is just something i'm starting i'm offering a special just for you okay just do it get out there and do it all you need to do is to get one to get started Okay, and it's something I could do myself or what I need a partner for it. Well, <laughs> you know, I've, I've got to tell you, my guys, my guys aren't going to answer that one. They said they're, they've already answered it, but they also are hearing all these other people on the call who want to ask their questions. <laughs> okay. 
So, All right. Sorry. Thank you very much. And I wish okay, you lots and lots of luck. I know you're going to be successful in your interviews. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. And Lisa, I think I have time for maybe one or two more people. Okay. I see this hand go up and down, up and down, up and down. Maybe she's nervous. <laughs> Vonda, I'm calling off. Vonda, you are self-muted. Can you unmute yourself? Hello. There, she goes. there you go. Can you hear me? I can. I'm going to walk to a part of the house that is not so loud. Hang on one second, because that is the reason my hand keeps going up and down, up and down. I've got a three-year-old, and he's kind of loud. <laughs> okay. So I'm Vonda from Aquarius from Illinois. Um, and I am most grateful for my like-minded friends at the moment. Good for you. And you in this chart are corresponding to both because the sun's in the fifth house here in Aquarius. It's corresponding to the fifth house of children. And there's your son with this all the stuff going on there. <laughs> this is what's going on yeah. your house right now. Isn't that interesting? And it also is the sixth house. So you're probably filled with questions about you know your daily life and your work and what are the big changes that are coming up for you and what should you be prepared for? Yes? Yes. I actually, I just feel a big transition coming on. I know I've been making small choices that are kind of leading towards something, um, but I don't know. I didn't know if maybe there was something you could tell me that I can prepare for because I like to be prepared. <laughs> But you, you, you know that the very biggest changes that happen to you in life are always as a result of the things that take you by surprise, even though you hate them. Yeah. <laughs> I do. <laughs> so, um, are you wanting to have another child? I hadn't really planned on it. No, <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. if I ended up having another child, I wouldn't be like terribly upset. But I hadn't really planned on it. Uh, that certainly is one of the things that's going to be on your plate as an option. And I can't tell whether you're going to be pregnant or whether you're going to plan the pregnancy that I'm not being given. But what I am seeing is that if you have another child, it will bring you joy. Okay. okay. Yeah, it definitely would. I wouldn't be upset. Yeah. And uh, I also see this question. Are we going to stay where we're at? Or are we going to move? We, now, I don't know if that's your home or your job. But it's, it's my job. It's a vacillation. Stay, leave, stay, leave, stay, leave. It's, it's my job for and, sure. Mm -hmm. You know what happens? I've got to just let you know this. When you're in that vacillation, you never leave. Okay? I know. Stay, leave, stay, leave, stay, leave. Just keeps you unhappily in the same situation. Okay? Right. So you need to, um, at some point, I hope you will, at this, this year, either realize that your stay, leave, stay, leave, stay, leave is really because you don't want to make that change. You're comfortable and you're not ready. Or right. you're going to do it. And what I'm perceiving here is that there is that next child on the horizon. And if you have that next child, you're better off just being where you're at. And that's why you're doing the stay with you. That would be true. You, okay? But if you choose to not have that next child, then you will leave and move to a different job that brings you greater satisfaction. And you'll know what you're going to do within the next year. The nodes of the moon and the eclipses are going through Leo and Aquarius for this next year. And so this year, we'll be making some big decisions about whether or not there's going to be another child, about what you want to be doing with the rest of your life, about your friends and the people that you have in your social circle, i.e. And they're going to be your decisions. They're not, you know, will your husband also join in them? Yes. But ultimately, they'll be your decisions that move you into the future. Um, if you do make a change in job, anything that has to do with anything surrounding kids, and I know that's like you're going to be with me, but it will take off and be a joy for you. Okay. Oh, well, my phone is dying. So I am so sorry. Hopefully my phone doesn't die. Nope, that's a that good. Good luck to you. Well, I can still hear you. So thank you so much. I do appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay, and Lisa, who's next? And this is going to be our last caller for the evening. 
All righty, I'm going to go up to Carol with a C. You're unmuted. Hello. Hello. I don't think that she's either she's not here anymore or she's not hearing you. I see, okay. Yeah, I see you're unmuted, but I think she must have stepped away from the call. So let's move on. Who's the next person? Alrighty, the next person is going to be if I can find her Lillian. Lillian, it looks like yourself. There you go. She's unmuted. Hi. Hello, Hi, Lillian. Nice to speak with you, Sandy. Um I'm uh I live in uh, New York City, and I am a Scorpio, and I'm most grateful for my my he- my good health. Very, very cool. And as a Scorpio, here you are down here between the second and the third houses, but mostly the third house. So, you know, you've got a whole lot going on where you're doing a lot of running around, a lot of craziness going on in your life right now. Um, and you're one of those people who tends to like calm, but it's not calm at the moment. It's a great time for you to be learning or doing something or even teaching something which is new and foundational. Also, I want to take a look at this eighth house here because as a Scorpio, the eighth house is very important. So this Mars Uranus pertains to you as well. You may find yourself either accident prone or being a little bit um, more outspoken than usual, which could have some interesting reactions from people, especially friends and siblings. (laughs) Okay. Do you have a particular question? Yes, I was just really wondering. Um, I've, I've been single for a very, very long time and, and just recently interested in, you know, meeting um, new people and getting into a relationship. Is that something I should be really focusing on at this time or well, what am I doing? I'm going to throw this right back at you, my friend. What does your intuition tell you? Uh, I, I don't know. Well, what did you just say to me? I've been getting this feeling recently, like maybe I could. Isn't that your intuition? I guess it is. Yeah. Isn't that that subtle flow that comes into your life and says, you know, this person might be coming along. Just pay attention. You know, you don't have to, but if you're interested in a relationship, this opportunity might be coming your way. Isn't that what intuition is? You're getting that full warning right now is what you're getting. Mm -hmm. Trust. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, What I see for you is that there was a past uh, person, gentleman in your life, who was a user, who was very immature, much younger than you in in spirit at any rate. Um, And you got taken advantage of and you got hurt very, very deeply. And you are a fixed sign. Scorpio is fixed. And it takes you a long, long time to crawl out of those experiences. Okay. And the card that I picked for you when you started talking about this is the, I don't know if you can see it here. It's a six of swords. And I want you to see the card because it shows you in that boat and you're going away from the rough water towards the smooth water and towards an island, which is safe. You see that? So there is the opportunity in your future, if you choose it, it's not going to be forced on you to have a relationship which is smooth and happy and comfortable and isn't involving the chaos and the idiocy of dealing with somebody who wants a mommy. (laughs) Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, isn't that nice? And that is a really beautiful note to end on. (laughs) So thank Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandy, very much. You're welcome, and good luck to you. Thank you. And folks, as we end this evening, I want to remind you that one of the things I love to do for this group, um, if you have been on the call here and you've been waiting and here with me for this whole time, um, if you should call me, or not call, but email me, and you'll get the email from uh, my website or from right here on go to go to webinar. Um, if you email one simple question, if I did not answer your question on this call, 
somewhere over the next week, I will be glad to answer that one simple question for you. Okay, and that has to reach me before 9 p.m. tomorrow evening, or I I just scrap it because I get so many calls. Okay, so many so many requests. Okay, so you have 24 hours to get that question in if you didn't get your question answered here tonight. Folks, this has been great. I love speaking with you every month. And remember, I'll be back again on February 10th at 9 p.m. You guys have a great and wonderful month. Goodbye.